everybody. Good afternoon. I want to welcome you all back to this special Workday 3 Boot Camp, Wells Fargo Boot Camp, R3 Boot Camp. And we are live again with our special instructors, Marshallin Hudson. And we also have Camille Simpkins with us from Wells Fargo. And we're so very excited to get you all through boot camp. If you, if you survive day two, then you're certainly ready for boot camp day three. And so I'm, I'm really excited to have you all here with us. Uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of information before we get into a little bit more about uh, day three of this boot camp. But as you know, we partnered, United States Black Chamber of Commerce partnered with Wells Fargo to develop and deliver this awesome, this amazing boot camp. Retool, Restore, and Recover. So glad that you all decided, made the decision to enlist and be here with us today. I'm going to briefly again introduce you to our instructors. We have with us uh, the amazing Marshallin Hudson, our social media and branding specialist who has been here with us uh, for the last two, two days, ready to deliver on day three. She was also with us last week to help us out with another client as well. And so we're really excited to have her back with us. And then we also have the equally amazing Camille Simpkins, uh, Wells Fargo Business Development Officer, who is going to give us some very impactful and, and business changing information uh, with us on today. So I'm really excited about that. Now for a few housekeeping uh, items. We do have some resources that have been provided by the USBC Community Economic Development Corporation. And uh, all of the programming, all of the content goes through the USBC CEDC uh, Corporation in order to get it out to you, our member businesses, our fellow entrepreneurs, so that we can help get you on the road uh, with your businesses. Next up, we recorded a special Juneteenth celebration on June 18th. We had a very, uh, you know, amazing and, and, and special uh, lineup of guests that provided some good information about the Juneteenth holiday and about how we can help move our community and our businesses forward by focusing in on this holiday. We will be replaying this event uh, in early July. So I wanna make sure that you all get a chance to uh, be on the lookout for that and register and attend that, that replay. Next up, we have some virtual webinars and some on-demand resources that we love to share uh, with all of you. And we want you all to go out and visit our website at usblackchambers.org forward slash webinars. Here you'll find a wealth of information on advancing black entrepreneurship, on certification and contracting for small businesses. And then also you can find out uh, different ways on how to help pivot your business as a result of the pandemic and coming out of the pandemic as well. So definitely go out and visit our website for that information. We also have our Grow with Google free training. We also partner uh, with Google. Google has an amazing lineup of coaches that provide some, some really great content and training on small business management, on marketing, uh, and on starting and running your own business. So you want to make sure that you tune in uh, to the Grow with Google free training that we have there. Visit our website, usblackchambers.org forward slash Grow with Google. And then lastly, for all of your up-to-date information and resources on the CARES Act and navigating COVID-19 for small businesses, we want you all to visit our website again, usblackchambers.org forward slash CARES Act. You can join a local chamber or you can join the USBC itself and then find out ways that you can attend weekly webinars, uh, whether it's uh, taking a look at some of the on-demand uh, material that I mentioned earlier or figure out how you can uh, come and join us in some of our meetings. So I want to make sure that we give you all an opportunity to come and learn from the USBC. Now, without further ado, I promised you all that we would have some, uh, some very special uh, folks that will be joining us. And so I'm, I'm gonna look through the audience and we have probably about uh, a good number of folks that have joined us here today, but I'm gonna look through the audience. I'm looking for a special guest. He goes by the name of Salvador Enrique. Salvador Enrique, is uh, the supply, uh, supplier diversity uh, manager uh, at Wells Fargo. And so I want to bring Salvador uh, to the stage. And, and so I'm going to uh, open the mic and I'm going to have Salvador make some very special remarks before we get started. Uh, hello, everyone. 
how I get to see you guys. This is so exciting. I, 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 as I told you, Philip, I wouldn't take more than a minute. I just like to uh, thank uh, Camille, Marsha, the U.S. Black Chamber. Uh, we would not be able to do these great accomplishments if it wasn't for the great partnership that we have with this particular chamber. They always, always, always kick it out uh, out of the ballpark. Uh, it's amazing. I, I've been uh, following uh, the R3 boot camp, and, and I've actually been sending pictures. Um, we are so excited that we are able to bring in these great subject matter experts. My, my whole thing is we at Wells Fargo are super committed of working with diverse owned companies. Uh, there's a, a great emphasis now being placed and uh, on making sure that we are working with African American owned companies that are certified. And uh, there are many opportunities. Wells Fargo spends more than a billion dollars with uh, diverse suppliers. Uh, we've been doing this for the past uh, seven years. Uh, at, uh, in 2020, even though it was a pandemic year, we spent $1.4 billion. Uh, a, a, a nice portion of that was with certified African-American-owned companies from all over the U.S. Not everybody has the opportunity to immediately sell the product or service at Wells Fargo. However, this is why we have these trainings, making sure that we're teaching um, African-American-owned companies, diverse-owned companies uh, to, to grow their business at Wells Fargo and beyond Wells Fargo. There are many companies that are tripping over themselves and trying to do business with uh, companies like the ones that are here in today's training. Um, I, I, I congratulate you for taking the time and carving this time to train your company. It is so important. There are three barriers that uh, uh, small and diverse owned companies encounter, access to capital, access to contract and networking. In uh, the R3 bootcamp, we're trying to teach you how to overcome those barriers. Less than 3% of diverse home companies ever reach that $1 million mark in revenues. We want for companies to not only meet that mark, but actually go beyond that. We are a better company because of our diverse suppliers. We are a stronger uh, 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 country and our economy depends on diverse home companies. The innovation that is coming out of um, uh, the far corners of, 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 of the United States from diverse home companies is phenomenal. I, I can't wait to see what is gonna be stored in 2021 when we're looking at to see what came out of the minds of all the individuals that were stuck for 18 months at home and what new inventions, what new ideas came out of it. And so no pressure, as I said, thank you, Philip. Thank you, Camille. Thank you, Marsha. I will. I promise to be a fly on the wall for the next uh, 90 to uh, 100 minutes. Uh, this looks really great. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Sal. And, and I, I want the audience to really absorb what Sal just said. And, and, you know, he said that Wells Fargo is a better company for its supplier diversity. And so that means that there are opportunities to do business with Wells Fargo. There are opportunities to do business with others. And uh, companies like Wells Fargo are great partners to have as we uh, try to move more towards uh, diverse and inclusion inclusiveness in corporate America. So thank you so much, Sal. Now I'm going to turn it over to the amazing Marsha Lynn Hudson, who is going to take us home for today. Marsha Lynn. All right, we are ready. <clears throat> okay, I'm trying to let me in. Trying to get in. Um, trying to get uh, host this, let me in. Can you let me in for screen sharing? All right, there we go. We are ready. So I am just excited and people are like, you're always excited. Yes, I am. <laughs> They're like, you always say that because I am. I'm so excited. I uh, wanna welcome you guys back. We're gonna have a great time today. So get yourselves those fingers ready to put things in that chat because we're gonna be active. We have made it to day three of boot camp. And you gotta give yourselves a pat on the back. And so you've learned so much. You learned uh, about digital tools that can help you with your customer's experiences. And you learned yesterday about the type of content and the content buckets to you. And so today we are going to talk about one of your most valuable assets and that is the email list. So I hope you are ready. And we're going to talk about how to grow that list from ground zero, whether you have no followers, no email subscribers, 20 email subscribers, 100, however many you've had, 
Well, we're going to grow that list. So if you've been following me, and I know some of you have, I like sayings because, you know, we need to keep ourselves motivated. And I like this saying, it says, chase the vision, not the money, and the money will end up following you. And you know that? That is so true. Uh, we are business owners, entrepreneurs, we need money, but I'm telling you, if you chase your vision, you chase your passion, and you love what you do, and it's contagious, and people can tell, the money will follow. And I like what Camille said yesterday. I think it was her son. Well, get the money bag, right? So what will you learn today from this training? Um, you're going to learn how to grow your email list from ground zero, how to get started with email marketing from concept, you know, to creation, like, starting the idea and creating it actually doing it how to grow your business with email and i have a bonus you know i love short form video that i call snackable video so have a little bonus clip at the end for you uh, how to grow your email list with snackable video so as i always say i enjoy giving webinars i love giving them and i like watching them also because learning is the key to growth and I was actually watching one last night after two others that I had given, but it was so good on the changes with Facebook. And I sat down and I thought, okay, with my pen and paper, if I get one idea that I can teach people or help people to learn what to do to help them on Facebook, this webinar was worth it, but I got so many ideas from that webinar. So I hope today if you took one idea, think about if you just take one idea, you are going to have so many ideas today from this training. And that just think if that one idea grew your business or took it to a new level. And that is going to happen. So who am I? Some of you are new today. And some of you have been with us on this boot camp, uh, and we're going to end with a bang where well, I do help entrepreneurs develop and, and get a strategy and a plan to create a, an online presence without being overwhelmed and confused. And um, I do wear quite a bit of hats, but I know how important it is for me to help other business owners who wear a lot of hats. So I am a social media specialist and I do have a professional photography company. My husband and I own that company. He's a drone pilot. I really like YouTubing and blogging. I told you I'm sticking my feet in podcasting uh, during the pandemic. Pandemic when I was home, since I'm a writing professor, I wrote a, a journal, Train Your Mind for Success. But I really, really enjoy the things that I do. But so much about me. That's enough about me, right? Because I want you guys to know it's always about you. And with your clients, it's always about them. I mean, th that's nice that I have accolades or you have accolades and we've gotten some education. But people really want to know what's in it for me. <laughs> what can you do for me? So my mission is to help entrepreneurs get a strategy, get a plan, and build a, line, a, a brand online without being overwhelmed and confused. And I encourage you to think of a mission statement for your own business. Think of a way that you help people, you help your clients, and put it in a sentence. So our first activity I want to see it in that chat. Put it in that chat. Put your mission statement in that chat. Let us know what you do to help your client. So I want to tell you this email marketing works. Okay. And here are some statistics because we're so busy. I don't want you to try to add something to your plate and it's not going to bring you any revenue. Like people say, well, Marcia, did you add Clubhouse? Did you add TikTok? No, I have a lot already on my plate and I'm not going to add a lot of other things that I can't really put into my schedule to help grow my business. But I will tell you this, email marketing works. You need to put that in your bag. Email yields strong investments. Every person on your list is worth $15 if you do email um, marketing correctly. And I'm going to show you that today. It's a good way to distribute content to a large audience. I really like social media. I like teaching social media, but we don't own our social media list. And we can be banned or we can be shut down, but you own your email. And so it helps you to grow your business and stay on top of mind. 
It's a great potential because customers get to hear from you. And email marketing, I always say, is a small business owner's best friend. So if you are ready to grow your list and you are ready to build your business, I want you to put in the chat, yes, I'm ready. Let me see it. Put it in the chat. Yes, I'm ready. So what if you only had five people on your list? You can make money. Okay, we have to be addicted to our passions and not our distractions. What is it that you're passionate about in your business, in your industry? And our distractions sometimes can be, well, I'm too busy or I don't have enough um, resources. Or, I don't know what to do or I don't know what to say. We have to be addicted to our passions and get over our uh, distractions. So it's okay to feel like you don't know how to get started, but all you have to think about is, I need to show up. I need to give value. I need to be consistent and you will grow. And we're gonna talk about showing up today, giving value and being consistent. Even if you started your email campaign and you decided, okay, I'm too busy for once a week, I can at least do twice a month. I'm telling you, everybody on your email list is worth at least $15 if you do it correctly and you're going to learn that today. So you don't have to do it a lot. You don't have to put long, make long emails. It's, they just need to be valuable, okay? So why should you build your list, okay? If you're on social media and you're like, well, I'm on Facebook and I'm doing this, there's so many benefits to building your list. You stay on top of mind. You build relationships. You get to promote your products and services and you get to increase your revenue. Just think about it. Most of you are probably here because you got an email. And what if you got an email from the USBC and that email popped in your inbox and it's like, we're going to have a boot camp and you're going to learn this and you're going to learn that and that. And so that's beneficial to you. And you were like, wow, let me put this on my calendar. I want to go to that. And then let's say you came to this uh, three-day or two-day, if it's your first day boot camp, I'm sure you've learned so much from the Wells Fargo representative, so much from uh, Philip Don, so hopefully from me. That email, that email right there was something that helped you build your business. What if you hadn't got the email? You would miss all of this stuff. And so email helps you to stay on top of mind. What if you, you got an email from a company and they were having a special or a sale? And I think about Amazon Prime days that just passed. Well, because we were notified about that, we all tried to get on there and get our sales at their Prime day. Everything comes from email. And I know they made a lot of money, but when you promote your products and services, you can too with email because you pop into the inbox, you give value, and then you can promote what if you wrote a book or what if you have a video series or what if you have a, a different type of product or what if you're having an, an, an event. Now people are more inclined to purchase from you because you've built relationships over the time and you will increase your revenue. So think about it. So now if you're, you know me, if you're taking notes and I hope you are and you're writing things down, um, ask yourself, what is keeping you from starting an email campaign? Put it in the chat. Um, I don't know how to get started or I don't feel like I have enough people on the list. I don't know what to write. Uh, don't check my own email. So I don't think they are effective or all of the above. And I've worked with some people that are like, well, Marsha, I don't really check my own email. So well, you're missing out just because you don't check yours. A lot of people check theirs. And it's not that people don't like emails or like, oh, I get so many. I just delete them. I don't look at them. It's not that people don't like emails. They just don't like bad ones or salesy. But just think if you started emailing, and your emails were offering value and you were giving trends and tips in your email from your industry. And also in your email, you know, you gave a call to action or you promoted your, your business. Then people are going to look for your email because they're gonna think, well, they're not just selling me something. 
I'm getting some valuable information from them. And so they're not going to delete your emails when they come because they think, wow, I know it's going to be something to help me in their email. So put it in the chat. What is keeping you from your email campaign? So are you ready for the list building plan? Grab that paper and your pen. I hope you have a nice relaxing seat where you're sitting. You have your favorite beverage. Turn off those distractions because you are going to want to take those. And as you know, stay to the end for free resources because I've created a third free thing for you at the end. Save those questions because we're going to have a Q&A and uh, we are going to get started. So I wanted to give you five action steps because when we are starting something new, we just don't want to be overwhelmed and confused and it's so much to do. Then we think, oh, well, I don't want to do that. Well, there are five steps actually to getting started with your email um, list. If you are a small business owner, entrepreneur, side hustler, or whatever, you have a side business because you work and things like that. Well, you want to choose a service provider. And we're going to look at these. A service provider is going to be great for you keeping analytics, who opened, when is a good time to send. And so I have a few that I like that we'll talk about. You want to create a winning opt-in. We want to look at opt-in. Some people call it lead magnets. Some people call it freemiums, but some people call it freebie. Uh, you want to craft good subject lines because that's what will cause people to click your subject line, use storytelling and value. That's what we're really going to uh, get into a little bit today in your content. See, it's what you put in the email from the onset that causes people to keep opening. Now, if I got an email from USBC in the future, I'm always going to open it because I know they're going to be talking about, oh, we're having a webinar, or we're talk we're having this, or we're, we're having this again. So much value. I would never delete their emails and not open them because now we know how much they do to help us as business owners. That's what will happen with you. And then you want to let people know about your email. So let's look at action step one. It is time to take action. And can you believe it? We're going into month seven of this year. So think about, have you been talking about something that you're going to do in your business since January? <laughs> and now it's July almost. Time goes fast. We have to take action right off. So first thing from uh, step one, choosing an email service provider. And I, I know we just have a small amount of time in our webinar, but in your own time, you want to check these out. These are the three that I like and that I'm familiar with. Of course, there are others, but do your homework and see which one works well for you. You have Constant Contact, MailChimp, and ConvertKit. I work with Constant Contact. I have clients who've worked with MailChimp, and I've worked with ConvertKit. And these are great service providers for um, everything you need to get started. And what I really like is, it's so easy. You know me, I like easy and fast. I don't want to be confused. I don't want to be overwhelmed. So when you get um, one of these providers or you sign up, and normally you may pay between $15 or $20, $25 a month, but it's so worth it. I think MailChimp has a free one. I haven't used that one, but I have clients who do. But you, it's so worth it because there are templates that you can just pull up, drag, drop your information, and you're done. You can actually create an email to send out in 20 to 30 minutes. So do your homework. Go to Google and look them up. And people say, well, Marsha, which one do you like? I always tell people, pick the one that you feel is going to work best for you check them out. These are great ones. Now, some of them, you can reach a live person and uh, some of them not. And I have clients who say, I want a live person. I say, well, look to see if that's offered. And so what are the other benefits of having a service provider? Because you don't want to just use your Gmail or whatever. Well, you can do segmented lists. And I really like that. And so let's say you start off with, you say, I, I think I'm going to get busy with, um, you know, starting an email campaign. So when you get a service provider, one good thing, you can have a list. For instance, in my, um, and I do use Constant Contact because I'm a service provider for them. 
but uh, let's say you have a list. My One of my lists is called real estate professionals. I'm a real estate photographer. So I might just send an email just to them instead of, and, and maybe it only pertains to real estate. And so let's say I have a different list, small business owners, then I may send an email to them. Then let's say I have a different list, women entrepreneurs or queenpreneurs. I love that, Camille. And I may send that to them or I may send it to everybody at times. So sometimes my emails um, are for everybody and sometimes they are for a certain group. So you can segment your list, put your emails in there. Um, you can schedule your emails. Of course, you can schedule them in Gmail, but uh, um, it's so, there's so many uh, benefits. I can make an email and sometimes I'm up working late at night at 11 p.m. at night. Now, I don't want to send an email, but I can make it, compose it, and then send it the next day. Uh, I really like how the providers gather data for you. They tell you who opened it, who didn't open it. Do you want to send it again to the people who didn't open? That's wonderful. Maybe they were busy or they missed it. And it'll tell you, sometimes, you know, it'll say this person unsubscribe. You're like, what? Why do you unsubscribe? Don't feel bad if a person unsubscribes. Sometimes they may just be busy or they may not need the information anymore. But you got a lot of other people. So it tells you everything you need to know. And I really like that resend to non-openers because sometimes people miss your, your email. So let's say you sent an email out on a Wednesday and um, to 600 people or a thousand people or 20 people. And then the um, data will say uh, 10 people didn't open it. Do you wanna resend it to those 10? Just say, yes, it's one. And then maybe you send it out in two, three days and they see it and open it. It's a great uh, tool. Um, you can send, of course, emails to thousands of people at once. The templates, I really like the templates. We're going to look at some of those. They're easy. It used to be, what in the world do I write? It's just taking me so long to make an email. What to write, what to do? Well, those days are over because the templates make it so easy. And like I said, I love the fact that we can send it to non-openers. So how do you choose a service provider for you? And I always say, do a Google search, you know, look at that company's website, look at the features, decide if it's a good fit for you. And then a lot of them will have where you can contact them through email or text and even live to get more information before you decide um, who you're going to use. And isn't that how business works? So if you're on the chat and you're thinking, I'm going to do that, I'm going to pick one of them. And the thing, and the question is, I wonder what's going to make you choose one and then they're going to get your money. That's how it works with us. I mean, we can be a business owner and we can be in a very competitive market, but what makes people choose us over three other people? Let's say it's not about price. Let's say there are four people that you're considering and all four of them are the, around the same price, okay? So let's say price is out. And you need to choose one of those people to work with in any industry. What made you choose that person out of the four if all of them had the same price? It's something to think about. And that's where building relationships makes you stand out over something who has someone who has the same price. So here are some sample templates, okay, uh, from Constant Contact. And all of them have sample templates, okay? So you don't have to use them. But what I like, and of course you can take screenshots and study it later. What I like is when I get ready to go craft an email, I will go to my um, email pro provider, I'll pull up the templates and decide which template I wanna use. And then I can use a template, click on it and change anything. I can change the color, I can change the words, I can change the pictures and there are Free pictures in the uh, the stock gallery for the uh, for these providers. Now they're offering free stock images, so you don't even have to go look for, for pictures unless you want to look for your own. And then, so I can drag and drop. So I can change one of these and put, let's say, where it says community news right here on the right. And let's say I chose that. 
And so I click it and it gets big on my computer. So I can change the logo and pull mine in. That took me a second. I can change where it says community news and put my name, Marsha Lynn Hudson. That took a second. I can change that image if I like and go to the free stock images or the ones on my computer and pull in an image. Then I can pull in one of my quotes. You know, I love quotes and business sayings. I can pull in a quote that would help my audience. For instance, I may pull in a quote from some of the people that I like to follow. Like success means getting up each day and taking small steps. So I may put that in because that is valuable to people. And somebody might see that and say, that's so true. I could just take small steps. So I pulled in that quote. And then I can pull in a few tips, how to be a successful uh, entrepreneur or the traits, five traits of being a successful entrepreneur. So see what I'm doing in this email? I'm giving value and people haven't deleted it yet because I'm giving them stuff that they're interested in. I gave them a motivational quote. It's like, really, I could do that. Then I gave them five traits of a successful um, entrepreneur where you just go to Google, read an article, change the words around. You don't want to do plagiarism, change the words around and, and put the five traits. You know, one trait is they are consistent. <laughs> they are consistent. So, and then you put that and people are like, wow, this is some great information. Now is you've been on your email about six or seven minutes, right? You put your, your logo, you put your name, you put a picture, you put a motivational quote, you gave some meat, five traits of a successful entrepreneur. And then as you go on, you may put another image or not. And then you're, you just end with your call to action. Let's say you want to start sending people to your podcast. So your call to action is be sure and click the link and head to our podcast. You see what I'm saying? Or you might want people to start following you on Instagram. Be sure to become a follower on Instagram, our new Instagram, click the link. Or you may be having an event. Be sure and join us for a Zoom meeting on Saturday. We're going to have a Q&A and you can ask us all kinds of questions you want about our industry. What are you doing with this email that only took you 15 or 20 minutes? You are building relationships and you are building that no like, I like this content, uh, trust. Wow, I'm gonna see an email from them twice a month. They trust you, they know you like. And then when you say, well, I have a program, it's $97. Be sure and click to learn more if you're interested in an online program, bam. And what if 10 people took the program at $97? What is that? Is that like close to $1,000? Uh, yeah, right? So it works. And then, so you're done. So you have your logo, you have your business name, you have a picture, a quote, you gave some tips and a call to action. And then you schedule your email. You go over to your list, you click your list, you click um, send it to these people, send it to the non-openers two days later and schedule it. And it's wonderful. And you can send a text to yourself first in case you have an error, fix it and skip and you're done. And what have you done? You popped up on top of mine. I probably, maybe I wasn't even thinking about your business, but now you popped up in my mind. So you might think, wow, I can do that. Put that in the chat. I can do that. So you want to gather any emails that you have, because sometimes people say, well, I don't have any emails. Well, this is how you can start with a good list of 25 to 50. Gather the emails that you have from other emails, maybe from Google or maybe from family and friends. Or, you know, you want to start to think of past clients. Um, you can start from ground zero and grow. What if you started with a good list of 25 to 50? And, you know, I'm from the old school. I've been teaching at the college 25 years. And I still like to write things down. And I know some people want to put it on their phones and that's wonderful or their computer, but I still like to write things down. And what if you just sat down and wrote out 50 good emails, their name and their emails that you can start emailing to and put them in your list, put them in your, uh, your service provider. And the first email, because if you hadn't been there for a while and you hadn't you know, been active for a while, 
you want to send a first email about uh, something like a welcome, you know, uh, we're back or we're starting our new email campaign or we're so excited and we hope you join, blah, blah, blah. So something to let people know we're starting this, especially if they hadn't seen you in a while. Now, we'll tell you this, do not buy emails, okay? And people always say, why, Marcia? But do not buy email lists. And if you purchased them before, you probably know that it didn't do well for you. I want to pop into people's boxes who actually want me to. They gave me their email. So if they gave me their email, they actually want me to pop in, okay? So here are some examples of the different lists you can have. You can have, you can put some names in a new client list. You can make a new client list in your provider and put those names, past clients, family and friends, opt-ins, and we'll discuss that. So maybe the new one email may go to new clients. One email may go to past clients. We miss you. We're, we're, sure, we're doing this. I'm so glad you've done business with us before. One email may go to family and friends, you see? So you can do different lists for a different type of email if you're just starting out, okay? So that was action step number one. Decide on your email provider, okay? Action step two, creating a winning opt-in. Well, what is that? I, you know, it is a lead magnet and some people call it a, a freemium and some people call it a freebie. But that is something that you create, whether in Canva or wherever you create it, uh, that you give away for free. And it's great. People need to say, wow, I couldn't believe this was free. And in exchange for one of people's most valuable commodity, and that's their email. Because you know, they're already thinking, oh, I already get so many emails. I have email. But if you show up, and you give value and you add uh, information that they need to help them in their business and their lives, they're going to be happy to get your email and you're going to have a great open rate. Okay, so an opt-in, and I'm sure you've given your email for it. I give my email so much for opt-in. If, if something comes across my feed or whatever, or my email and it says, download our free guide, on how to use Instagram to grow your business. I'm always looking for resources like that for me and to help my clients. So I click and give them my email so I can get the download. So the, you know, the opt-in is something you create of value. It doesn't have to be long. It just needs to be valuable, okay? And people may say, well, I don't, I can't write that or I don't know what to write. And I tell people, think about what people ask you. What is it that your clients ask you all of the time? That's a great opt-in. How do you create a great opt-in? Just do that. Ask yourself, what is it that I could give away that people would give me their emails for? Now, this is day three of the boot camp. I've had so many people to go and get my free strategy workbook, my free uh, hashtag guide, my free uh, branding course. Why? Because people want that. So we have to create something that people want. So your opt-in or your freebie, and, and I talked about this in another, another day in the bootcamp, and just be, in case you're new today, I didn't want you to miss that. Your opt-in or freebie is one quick win. You want to solve one problem. So think about, let's say you are um, a designer and what is it that your clients ask you all of the time? Let's say you're a consultant. What is it that your clients ask you all of the time? Maybe you are um, a real estate professional or maybe you are a writer or, a, you know, what is it that they ask you all of the time? For me, people say ask and I write the questions down. And I said, this is a great free, uh, lead made. So I've come up with so many of them based on what people ask me. Well, Marcia, how do I get started with blogging? So I made up an opt-in, eight steps to blogging. Well, Marcia, how do I, you know, put social media into my schedule? I'm so busy. So I made an opt-in, how to add social media in 30 minutes, three days a week. And people say, well, what do I do to get started with email? So I made an opt-in. So you don't need as many as I do. I just have an array of different clients. You need one or two good opt-ins, something that people will say, wow, I want that information. 
And like I said, if you are a business, uh, are you a beauty um, consultant? Seven steps to, steps to getting rid of acne. I was asking one of my clients, she is a beauty consultant. I said, what do people ask you all the time? They want to know what to do about acne. I said, that's your lead magnet. And all you need is seven steps. It needs to be valuable. And the PDF was about two pages long and that's it. But it needs to work. And people are like, wow, this was free. Go to your website and they can't wait to see what else you have and maybe purchase one of your products. And I said, well, what's another one? She goes, well, people have problems with discoloration. That's your second lead magnet. You see? So whatever people are asking you, that's your lead magnet. You can make a video series as a lead magnet, a short two to three short little videos, how to do something. Step one is video one, step two, step three, and give it away as a freebie. And let's say you have tools that you use. I have lots of tools like Canva and Unsplash and Facebook Studio, Creator Studio, all of the tools that I use. Put a toolkit together for your industry and give that away. So here are some sample opt-ins that work well, that people want, and they will give their email for. And I know because a lot of them I gave <laughs> my email for. Uh, well, let's say your uh, audience is really interested in SEO, and they, they come across this, and they're like, wow, I want this. They download it. Let's say your audience is really interested in getting a free planner. So here's a, a free planner that's one of the planners that this company was given away. And it's really awesome, <laughs> really. Um, let's say you are in the nutrition business or the food business and you are giving away five free meal plans. Wow. Subscribe to 100 Days of Real Food. And let's say the people are like, wow, I really want that. And they're getting uh blogs and real food meal plans and what to cook and what to eat that's a great opt-in and so people get their email for it to get that information uh for facebook ad mistakes that's a big one because people are trying to figure out facebook ad now if you're like i did a facebook ad and i don't know why it didn't work and you saw this you're definitely going to give your email for it for Facebook ad mistakes that are losing you money. And let's say you click that. Now, when they click your download, it needs to be good, okay? Because people need to think, she gave this free? Wow. <laughs> I can't wait to see what, if I buy a product, what I'm going to get. It doesn't have to be long. Even if it's just four mistakes, they need to be very important. Okay, learn three secrets uh, for copy and uh, connecting things that convert. And so things that people want to know work well for opt-ins. They give their email for it. And we're going to talk about, well, once people give you their email, what do you do to keep them on your list? Okay, because we don't want them to just get your freebie and get off your email list. So we're going to talk about that. So toolkit for growing your business online. Who wouldn't want to know? what to do to grow their business online. You see, 60 journal prompts. This is a great uh, lead magnet for a writer, an author. Um, this is great. And so someone would download it and get your 60 uh, prompts. Now they're on your email list. A free logo inspiration. What if you're thinking, hmm, I really need to kind of get some ideas for a logo that I want to do. And then all of a sudden you see this ebook. Maybe the ebook is five or six pages. So a lead magnet, when you're thinking of creating one, needs to be, just think about it, something that your clients want because they're going to get that freebie or freemium and give you their email. A cheat sheet for writing blog posts, okay? 13 ways to increase your conversion rate right now. These are all examples of a lead magnet. And so I tell people when people say, okay, I can do that, Marcia. Uh, uh, you know, put it in the chat. I, I want to create a lead, a, a lead magnet. Well, it shouldn't take you more than two days, 48 hours to create a lead magnet or an opt-in. So if you're here in the, the boot camp, it shouldn't take you more than two days because once we, 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 we come and we learn so much, I know I love webinars. I learn so much. I don't want it to get away from me. But if I get too far away from it, a week goes by, two weeks go by, and I didn't do it. 
So I always say 48 hours. Think of three top questions that people ask you, okay? And you can come up with a lead magnet. Um, for me, here's one, how to grow my following on social media. And that's one that can be a lead magnet. And when people download it, like, wow, I got some great tips on how to grow my following. I will tell you one way, use hashtags, <laughs> you, know, you see? So people are like, okay. And I will tell you this, when you're using Instagram, use 30 hashtags. So that piece of uh, information was so important. Um, you don't need but one or two good lead magnets. They don't have to be long. They just need to be valuable. So you can create one of my favorite tools, and I'm sure you guys know about it, and opt in with Canva in no time. <laughs> um, and so you know that Canva, you can have a free version. I use the paid version, but the free version is good. And I made this one in Canva. And people were saying, I need to know what to put, what to say, how to engage, what kind of content. So I made the lead magnet, except 37 storytelling and engagement posts for your social media. All I did was I went to, or well, first of all, I went to my Word document and I, cre I wrote out the 37 engagement posts. And then I went to Canva, created this cover, uh, put a few little pictures, you know, doctored it up a little, and upload it to my resource library. And when people click it, they have 37 storytelling and engagement posts for their social media. Made it in Canva in no time. All right, so if you are following me and you're geared up, here's an activity for you. Write down three ideas for an opt-in for your business. And I will tell you, it's like the uh, little samples we saw. People like how to. People like cheat sheets, people like a toolkit, things that they can use a quick win, one thing, and then they can get and use for their business. So if you're doing these activities, write it down because I'm hoping that you will be like, wow, I created a lead magnet. Okay, now what to do next, right? <laughs> I created a lead magnet because I'm getting ready to start my email list. Sometimes all we need is some ideas. And so you, you might think, okay, I'm in the real estate business. You can uh, do a, a lead magnet on uh, how to prepare your home to sell it. You see what I'm saying? So you have to think about what is it that people ask me all the time and then jot down some ideas of a possible lead magnet. All right, so action step three. Now you have to create great subject lines that people will open. So now you've decided, okay, I'm going to start email marketing. I'm getting an email provider. I'm going to get my list together and I'm going to make my um, lead magnet. So I'm ready for my first email to send it out. And you're excited, right? So what's in the subject line? I made an email a few days ago. <laughs> people love it, it said in the subject line, knock, knock, who's there? <laughs> and I think I put it in this thing. And so I think about, okay, it needs to be catchy so people can open it. And my husband rarely opens my emails, even though I send it to him. He goes, I saw your email, knock, knock, and I opened it. I, he said, that was catchy. And so you want to think about an email that will make people, you know, who are maybe in your family who are just used to your stuff all the time, say, wow, what's this? So a one word um, subject line, it can be good. You can put in the email, hello, it's curiosity. And people are like, oh, let me click it. And they know it's from you. Okay, so it's okay. One word subject lines work. I did some research to look up creative subject line. You can ask the question in your subject line. What is holding you back? You see, um, you want to avoid using words that trigger spam because then if you're doing Gmail, you know, it puts it in that other little folder, but you want to uh, avoid these type of words in your subject line. Words like gift or save or deal and offer. Don't put those in your subject line, put it in your email. Okay. But your subject line needs to be something that people um, think about, wow, okay, what is this about? But if you put deal or offer or gift, then they're going to think you're trying to sell them something. 
which we kind of are, but we don't have to do that right off the bat. You can create a sense of urgency in your subject line. Today only. I know that kind of works for me. Uh, three days only before time runs out. Um, Amazon did that quite a bit with their two-day um, prime days. At the end, it was like, only two more hours left. I was like, oh my goodness, <laughs> only a few more hours left. It works, you see? So other subject lines that you can use, and you can feel free to take uh, screenshots because these are great subject lines if you're getting ready to start. Make a statement. Here is how to make it better. Um, make a state. Lists and numbers work well as a subject line. The subject line needs to make people who get all of these emails, it needs to make people not skip yours and want to open it. The subject line is important. Eight amazing tips to something. Curiosity. I used to do something. Go through the emails that you have. This is really a good activity right here in your spare time. Go through the emails that you get and look at the subject lines and think, wow, okay, this is a great subject line. Are you, or think about the ones that you open because of the subject line and model. You don't have to copy word for word, but model. Subject lines are what will, is what will get people to open. Now, when you use that subject line, make sure you put something in the email about that. If I said eight amazing tips to grow your brand online, and that's the subject line. And people click. And then I didn't give the tips. That's not good. Okay. So you want to make sure your subject line matches your content. So I always tell people, clean up your email list. Um, when you have a subject, uh, a, a provider, uh, you're, uh, you increase your open rate when you remove, I didn't know this until constant contact told me, you, when you remove subscribers who hadn't opened in a while. Okay, so I went in and I had a lot of subscribers um, and I thought, we think, oh, I don't want to lose those people. But if they hadn't opened in a while, you lost them anyway. Maybe they moved or changed jobs or something. And I told Constant Contact, I said, just remove everybody who hadn't opened my email in 12 months. And they removed the people who hadn't opened my email. And I don't care if I lost 100 or 50 or 150. I want the people who are engaging. So you increase your open rate when you go through and remove subscribe. Now, you may not want to do the one year. I just took the, the, the leap. It's like this. If they had not opened in 12 months, you may want to do a year and a half. I don't know. And we just removed them and, and start afresh. Clean up your list. It helps, it helps your open rate. Uh, so three parts to a 30-minute newsletter that you can create. So you might be saying, okay, Marsha, I'm ready for this. What do I put in this email? Uh, you said it only takes 30 minutes. Well, let's say you're sending out an email on your home, you open up your service provider, you have this blank slate, right? And Or you have a template. And so you want to open with a short story or something interesting. It could be two sentences. Um, sometimes I'll open an email and my subscribers love it. And it may say something that they can connect with. For instance, I may open it with two sentences that says, are you tired of being stuck inside? Are you wondering what to do different with your business? So I just open it with something that people are shaking their heads saying, yeah, <laughs> uh, because we want them to stay on the email and continue down. Or you may start your email with a short two sentences, something that you've been doing, you know what, just act like you're talking to one person. And you might say, you know what, I've really been enjoying um, taking time to, to figure out where I want to go with my business. I've really been taking some time to focus and not keep doing everything. Um, do you get that too? And people are like, yeah. This is a great way to open an email. You're keeping people in your email. It only has to be one or two sentences. You can open it with a, a quote or saying, but something that people are saying yes to. Are you, you know, yes, yes. And then in the middle of the email, we talked about put some tips that would help answer a question or solve a problem or help with a struggle. 
And so if you started your email, you know, with something interesting or a sentence or two to keep the people reading, and then you go to the middle and you say, you know, people ask me all of the time, how can I grow my business on social media if I'm so busy? And then I may put the answer, you see? So it people will open your emails then because they're going to get something that they need. And then at the end of your email, that's when you end with your call to action. What is it you want them to do? After they read your email, what do you want them to do? Do you want them to go to your podcast? Put a link. Do you want them to go to your YouTube channel that you started? Put a link. Do you want them to go to your book that you wrote and it's on Amazon? Put a link. Do you want them to go to your webinar that you're giving? Put a link. Do you want them to go to um, follow you on your new channel like Instagram? Use Put a link. What do you want them to do? Sometimes I make an email and I don't put anything. I would put at the end, be sure and head to my website, marcelinahudson.com and get your free guide on how to use hashtags. I, because what I want them to do now is go to my website and get something. You're already on my list. Let me just give you some. So I don't always say, you know, go check out my course or whatever, but you can because now you build a relationship uh, with your followers. So ask the step four, what do you say in the email? As a recap, okay, start the email with two to three sentences that people can relate to. And you can take a screenshot. Here's an example of what I just finished talking about. As a business owner, I struggle with how to move forward at times, but I know that consistency is the key to success. I can start my email like that. And in the middle of it, I might say three ways to find success in your own business. That's the middle. And then the last part, my call to action. It works, it works. And people will open your email because number one, you're starting with something they can relate to. I just act like I'm talking to one person when I send an email. If I send it to 500 people, I'm acting like, let's say I send it to 500 women business owners, okay? Because I have a list for women business owners. We love our men, but sometimes my emails are just with my, my queen preneurs, right? And so let's say I send an email to 500 of my business, my women business owners. Um, and I just act like I'm talking to one business owner. She's awesome. She's a business owner. She struggles sometimes. Some, she works by herself or she may have one other person. She's trying to figure out how to juggle stuff. She's trying to figure out how to move forward. She loves her business. She's passionate about her business. And she may be feeling like I am just overwhelmed. And then bam, here I come and relate to her. As a business owner, I struggle with how to move forward at times. People are like, really? As much as you do, Marsha? Oh, yeah. And now, bam, I, she can relate to me. And then I give her some meat, how to be consistent in the email. And then I give my call to action. Wow. The next time I send an email, you think she's not going to open it? <laughs> yes, she is. <laughs> That's how it works. So the middle of the email is where you give the meat. So feel free to take your screenshot. You give your value or your tips. It doesn't have to be long. It could be a few things. Just help people. Help people to feel better after reading your words. Donald Miller, and I like Donald Miller. He wrote a book called Story Brain. And he doesn't give me any money for it, but it's a, it's a great book. Uh, and, he and he has a lot online too to help you build a brand through stories. And um, in his book, he said, words matter. And I, I've been reading it. Oh, he, he said, words matter. What you say to people, how you say it to people, how you connect with them, they matter if you want them to be a client. So give tips, give value, insert a motivational quote. What if somebody had a really hard weekend and then they see your email and you gave a motivational quote, quote, keep it going. Share a testimonial of a client, give helpful advice, give an announcement, teach something. That's what you do in the middle of your email. And at the end of your email, we talked about the beginning, 
So I would have sent us a two that people can connect with. They're shaking their head. Act like you're talking to one person. In the middle, give the meat. In the end of the email, that's when you give your call to action. What is it that you want people to do? Where do you want them to go? Send them there. Do you want them to go to your website? Do you want them to go to your social site? Do you want them to go to your blog or podcast, an offer that you have, or your store, or product, or your opt-in? Emails, guys, work. So here's a great activity for you to do in, in your spare time. Compose a three-part email before two days have passed. You know, on your sofa, right? When, when you write an email, write like I do, write as if you're talking to your one ideal client. If your one ideal client is a woman, certain age, you know her behavior, act like that email is to that one person. If your ideal client is to a group of business owners, act like you're writing to one business owner who would rep, um, you know, represent that group. It makes it so much easier than thinking, wow, I got to send this to 2,000 people. And remember, part one, you open with something that people can relate to. What if you're a business, a company, and you're like, okay, what do I start my email with? I'm a company we have like, like the USBC. They can start their email with anything that would grab a business owner's attention. Anything, because so much stuff that would grab a business. I see they had a wonderful Juneteenth thing. They can say, did you miss the Juneteenth event? Well, never fear. We have a video on it. You see, it's just that simple. Uh, did you miss the three-day boot camp? Huh? We recorded it. You, you, you missed something if you did. We had Wells Fargo. We had Marceline Hudson. But you don't have to miss out because you can go and see it. It's just that simple. And then you give the value. They can talk about a few of the things that the people missed in the three-day boot camp. So they might say some things that you missed and put a few things that Wells Fargo said, put a few things, and then at the end, click here to go watch it. It works, it works. So the best days and times. So Marshall, when are the best days and times? I'm, I'm on board, so put it in the chat if you are on board. Put it in the chat, I'm on board, right? So the best times to send an email, according to research, would be Tuesday through Thursday. I noticed that I get the bulk of the ones that I've subscribed to on Tuesday morning. And get this, 6.30 to 7.30 a.m. And I was thinking, why? And this makes sense because people wake up and check their email. I know I do. <laughs> and so let's say you compose an email Monday night and, you know, you, you threw it your day. You're like, okay, I got a little time. Let me pull up my email. I learned what to put in the email and you schedule it to go out Tuesday at 6.30 a.m. People wake up, they pick up their phone, they check their email and your email is there so they won't miss it because we get so many. So this is, these are the best times to send an email. Um, now, you may have found Fridays or Saturdays work well for you. And that's great. Just keep up with your analytics. And the way you know is your service provider will tell you. So let's say you sent an email Friday at 10 a.m. And you had a 16% open rate, which is pretty good. Then that may be a good time for you. Okay, I usually send mine Tuesday through Thursday, 6.30, 7.30 a.m. I have a pretty good open rate. Your provider tells you that. And if I send it out, it's like, mm, my, my open rate was low this time. I know it's not because people are not opening my email. They love them because I'm always going to give value or something. But it's because they missed it. You see? So we want to pick a time that works well. So ask yourself five, we get to the end, how to promote your newsletter. So you're like, okay, I'm going to do this. I want to get started. How do I put the word out? Well, you can promote your newsletter on your social media. We talked about social media. If you're on Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter, you know, you can do a video, a short little video and talk about it. You don't want to say, be sure and check out our email. Because, you know, clickbait doesn't work well for Facebook. But you can do it on LinkedIn. Uh, you can put your, e your email link on your link tree in your bio on Instagram. And if you don't know what that is, put it in the question and answer. And I'll go a little bit more over link tree. 
So you can put it in your link tree, in your in your bio on LinkedIn, and people can click email or you know your LinkedIn. Like I say, for Facebook, you got to kind of be a little creative with it because you can't use clickbait. I talked about that. You can't make a post and say, "Be sure to check our email out and click and leave away." Facebook doesn't like that, but you can say it in a video. Okay. So you got to put your you can put your opt in on your website. That's another way to promote it. Social media through video. Uh, put it on your put your opt in on your website. If you follow me at all, you know I have opt ins on my website at marshallanhudson.com because I'm a huge believer in email. And if you have joined it, and some of you have over the last few days. You're going to be getting an email from me thanking you pretty soon because you're new from this week to my email list. So other digital tools to promote your newsletter. You can promote it through your blog or your podcast. Remember I told you that's like your own radio show. You can really promote your, your newsletter through your podcast. Create a landing page. Some people, they don't have a website. So create one through Wix, so a landing page where it's, it just lets people know they can click here to get to your service provider. YouTube videos, short form videos that you make with your phone, going live, having Zoom meetings and trainings. I really need to do a webinar on how Zoom meetings will grow your business. Q&A Zoom meetings, but that's for another time. So what do you have to offer? Um, now you've given away a freebie or a premium and you've done it a few times, okay? You're in business, you wanna make money, create something that people can actually buy, okay? People are more inclined to buy from us once we've given them so much value. So what if you created an ebook and sold it for $9.95? What if you had consultations where people can talk with you with 30 minute consultation for a certain fee? They're going to get it now because you've given them so much value. Why wouldn't they want a consultation from you? You've given them so much value. Why wouldn't they want your ebook? You've given so much value. What if you had a video series that you created and it was a low cost offer, $29? What is it? If it was a guide that you made and it was a $47 low cost offer is $50 and under. And then once people come in through your freebie, then your low cost offer, then you can move them to your premium offer. It works. What if you made a virtual training? What if you had another product, a course, and it was $27? You see it all the time on Facebook uh, Facebook ads. They work. So now you create a low-cost offer. And now in your email, your call to action, you promote your low-cost offer. Okay? It may be $19. Then you get people to your premium offer. So what do you do? Once people have become a part of your email list, now they got your freebie, they love, what do you do? Do you just ignore them? Do you just sell to them? No, you have to nurture them. Two times a month is great. You got to continue to make sure that your email content is what they expect. Okay, with the three parts we talked about, don't start off selling off of value first. Let them know about your specials at the right time. Okay. Uh, build that no like, and trust factor. They know you. They like your email. They trust that they're going to see something from you every uh, twice a month. Continue to email them with value. And use you can use those six buckets of content that we talked about on yesterday. And you can even attach a video in your um, email. Now, you might be saying, I don't want to be on camera. I don't want to put my face on video. Well, you can make a video where you're not showing your face. You can show your screen. I like screencast matic And it's, I think it's $15 for the year. I can take my screen, videotape it, and upload it to the, my email. And they just watch my screen or hear me if I didn't want to put my face in. So how do you turn subscribers into loyal customers when you use email correctly, like what we taught today? Well, the thing about it is, uh, are you doing what you need to do to make people become a customer, giving the value? Or are they looking at their inboxes and you're not there? If, they, if people are looking at their, your inboxes like this picture and you are not there, I will tell you this from experience. You are leaving money 
on the table. You are leaving money on the table. So send two emails a month. They don't have to be long, just that valuable. Be conversational like we talked about. Don't use too many links and pitches. And, and pitch it. Focus on one thing. You have one purpose, your call to action at the end of the uh, email. Maybe you want them to get an ebook or something. Focus on one purpose. And so as a recap, as we wrap up, action one, action step one, and you can take pictures with your phone, get a service provider, do your homework, check, check one out. Uh, create an opt-in, go to Canva. If you don't want to do it, hire somebody from Fiverr. They can make you one. They probably, you probably just pay $20. Um, craft good subject lines, put good content that people are interested in, promote it, and be consistent and nurture your subscribers. You'll be, you'll be emailing me in a few months saying, oh my God, Marsha, you were so right, right? So here's my end bonus. Use short form video to drive people to your website and grow your email list. It only takes one, one, two to three minute video. Pick up your phone, turn on the video on your phone, stand in front of the light, Give an introduction, some value, call to action. This snackable video only needs to be two to three minutes. And I made one just for you guys. So if you go to Instagram and you type in Marshall Lynn Hudson Media, you will see that snackable video that I made this morning for you guys. If you go to Facebook and type in facebook.com, Marshall Lynn Hudson Branding Strategies, you will see that snackable video that I made just for you guys this morning to show you how well it works and how easy it is. And you can also use that to um, build your list. So knock, knock, that was my title for my email. People loved it. Knock, knock, who's there? Is it opportunity? What will you do? It is opportunity. You have a lot of opportunity now. What will you do? with the information you learn after three days of intense marketing from me, from Wells Fargo, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna just like, oh my gosh, that was wonderful. And the weekend comes and you're done. You go out the 4th of July picnic <laughs> or are you gonna get busy on it? It doesn't take a year. Sometimes we talk about something and we look up, it's been seven, eight months, a year. It doesn't, it just takes a decision. So guys, I hope you connect with me. You can always go to marshallandhudson.com and find all of my links um, to my site. You can also go to Marsha Lynn Hudson Media on Instagram and I have link tree with all of my links. Um, so thank you so much for joining me on this three-day bootcamp. Give yourselves a pat on the back. You made it. Put it in the chat. I made it. And, and I hope that you take some things that you learn implement some of them you don't have to do all of them but i have that free strategy workbook for those of you who are new today but if you've been here three days i've also added an email marketing guide and my ultimate marketing blueprint and it's all free at my website marshallinhudson.com so you have a lot of resources for you to help you build and brand and grow your business so thank you guys so much and we are going to be ready for Q&A and then we're going to get ready for Ms. Camille. Marsha, again, thank you so much. Uh, it was day three. And yes, we did make it. We made it. Uh, many of you attended all three days. Uh, uh, some of you were able to make one or two days. But either way, it's just a tremendous amount of value that you provided to us. And uh, I, I'm ashamed to even say, no, I'm not ashamed. I'm going to steal <laughs> that. Did you miss the Juneteenth celebration? That's it. <laughs> I'm going to steal the, did you make the WR3 uh, boot camp? And I'm going to make sure to, to use that. You'll get a chance to see it. Our audience will get a chance to see it as well. Uh, there were a couple of questions that came in in uh, the q and I do have to ask, Marsha, I know you said send out two emails per month, but are there times where we should step it up and send out more emails beyond the two? I, that's a great question. I really prefer one a week. But I found that my clients are like, oh, I'm so busy, I'm so busy, and they won't do it. So I prefer one a week, which would be great. But I say, okay, if you're not going to do one a week, at least do two a month, because I don't want you to not do it, because the one a week gets to be too much. So, but you want to keep on top of mind. 
And if they can do it once a week, that's great. If not, at least twice a month. At least twice a month. Okay, perfect. And then I know that some social media platforms don't allow you to see email addresses of the users. I know I've gotten created in some of the groups that I manage where, you know, I'll ask for email information up front. What other ways can you draw in that email information from our social media users? Um, that's great. Well, the bet that's a great question. Yeah, the emails, the social media platforms want to protect people's emails because people don't want to just give it, you know, because they get so many in the first place. The, the only ways that I found to really get emails would be if you're not the, the lead magnet is the number one. You can Google it all over the place. The lead magnet or the opt in is the number one way to get it. Now, if you're not going to do that, if you um, if you give webinars or if you give Zoom meetings or if you do anything live, let's say you do a, a, a Facebook live for five minutes, then you can talk about it verbally, you know, and ask people to be sure and join our email list because we're going to be sending this, this, and this. So the, you, you really can't get it from social media. You can't get people's emails from social media. But the biggest way is to give a freebie because they're going to download it and you get their email or tell them some type of way verbally. You see, those are the two ways. But And I tell people, don't buy email list. People really don't want people popping in their box if they didn't give you their email. Right. It's just like your home address, right? You don't want to just give it out to anybody. Uh, but there are ways around it. You described several that that are very, very effective. Uh, and then the last couple of questions, uh, you know, there's so much disinformation, especially in the political realm uh, that floats around. And for those folks that work in those types of businesses, would you typically opt in to receive information about the spectrum of news sources or from, you know, from judicial candidates and, and political candidates? Or do, do folks typically stay away from those types of opt-ins? Uh, that's a great question. It just depends on who the, the audience is. Because uh, I was working for, um, I was doing social media management, which I don't do it anymore because I'm busy. But I was doing social media management for a group of lawyers um, a few last year, year before that. And um, I had to, they were like, we really need more emails. <laughs> we really need more emails. So I created opt ins for them that people who are interested in what they have to say, what they're about. But see, they were having an organization that they were creating so that people could know who to vote for, why you should vote for them, you know, what's going to happen if you don't vote. Well, that's good information to some people. And if you reach out to the right audience, then those people, they do want the opt-in. So you don't have to stay away from that. And, you know, if you're in that, it's just that people, it, you know, let's say you are a candidate and you mm -hmm. have a website and you have uh, 10 keys to vote in the correct way. Well, for me, I would download that because I'm a person who want to vote the right way. I want, so I would download it, you see? Right. So it has to be now, somebody else might say, well, I'm not interested in that. They're not going to download it. So you don't have to stay away from it. You just have to make a good opt-in for the people who would download it. And when they download it, now you got an email, you want to send them emails that's giving them that information. Right. You see? Or we're going to unsubscribe. So yes, even as a political person, judiciary, yes, you can make an email, but you got to reach out to the right people because they want that. If you had an email, an opt-in that said, let's say you were a candidate. I love that kind of stuff because I want to know. And I happened up on your email and you had an opt-in that says um, five ways to know um, the... Um, five ways to know what you need to know about the judicial system or how to choose judges that are right for your your culture i want that right because i'm gonna go vote <laughs> right it's so all in the way you design it it's all in the way that you present it and then that makes it attractive rather than a right to the right. right person it makes it attractive some people are like nah, i'm not interested in that but then when you get 
those people who have opted in and they're, they're like, wow, this is some great information that I needed to know before I go vote. Then you got to email them and continue. And so let's say, what's her name? Um, she does a great job of it. I opted into hers um, and she emails all of the time about where she's been, what she's doing. Um, I know who it is, I'm just not gonna say the name, but I like the fact that I opted into her email and she'll say, I've been in uh, Austin doing this this week, now I'm home. And she keeps, she lets you know what you may know I'm talking about. She lets you know who, what's going on, what happened and what's happening, what she's doing. I love her emails. And she mm -hmm. lets you know, she's, you know, political figure. I actually voted for her mm -hmm. because of that. So it, it works. Okay. All right. There you have it, folks. Work day three, boot camp, R3 boot camp. Marsha Lynn Hudson has delivered so much value to us today. And we thank you so much, Marsha, for being here with us today. Now we are going to turn our attention to our Wells Fargo specialist, Camille in Simpkins, who is a Wells Fargo business development officer. How are you today, Camille? I am doing good and so empowered and strengthened through uh, Marsha's presentation. Thank you. You did all the heavy lifting for me, so this is going to be easy. <laughs> oh, well, well, I stole some things from you, so. <laughs> no, and, and I appreciate the way that you both work well together in delivering a lot of this good content because it also ties together. Many of us want to develop relationships with banks. Wells Fargo, as I mentioned earlier, has been a very powerful partner to the USBC in helping to get our businesses off the ground, helping them to uh, thrive and succeed, especially during this pandemic uh, uh, situation that we find ourselves in. So Camille, I want us to pick back up where we left off on yesterday. And yes. I know that we talked a little bit about mentorship, but then we're kind of getting ready to get into, you know, some of the information about chambers and, and some other information. I'll let you take it away. I've shared the screen here and, and we're just going to pick right back up if that's okay. Perfect. Um, so day three, woo! Day <laughs> three of R3, where you receive the tools to, to retool, restore and recover. Um, for those of you that are new to the program, um, as I mentioned yesterday, I salute you because you are rooted, resilient, and ready to grow your business, um, in some cases, pivot your business for success. And um, just being here on day three, you have to feel empowered and strengthened and conditioned to really move your business forward and to um, take from Marsha Lynn's presentation, I think the best way to do that for me today is to give you a lead magnet. Um, and we're going to pretty much begin where we ended yesterday. A lot of your um, questions um, yesterday evening were regarding uh, mentors and how do you go about locating uh, the best mentor or where do you begin? Um, with locating a mentor. So if I may, I am going to put in the chat something that is being made available to you, unveiled today. Let's make sure I'm getting this right. So Philip, I may need your help here. How can I go about copying and pasting a website? You know, why don't you tell me the website information and I'll type it in for you. Okay, so let me get that. So it's wellsfargo.com slash small hyphen business slash jump. J-U-M-P? Yes slash other, so O-T-H-E-R, slash connect, so C-O-N-N-E-C-T, hyphen, T-O, hyphen, more, M-O-R-E. So we should have wellsfargo.com, slash small, hyphen, business, slash jump, slash other, slash connect hyphen to hyphen more 
All right. All right. Let me get this. It in. Um, this new program is called Connect to More. Connect to More was made possible through the um, fees that Wells Fargo received from the Small Business Administration for the payroll protection loans that we processed. $400 million was um, shared with the business community. This program is specific to women business owners. It is a complementary program and the support um, that Wells Fargo is providing um, is one of the reasons that I am proud to work for the organization. So let me explain to you what this program is and how it'll best benefit you. It's a 12 week program. You'll be able to gain additional tools and focus your energies toward your specific industry. You'll also have an opportunity to create business plans and strategize your priorities for the upcoming quarter. But the icing on the cake is that you are going to receive a peer mentor specific to your industry that is going to help you while also being invited to working groups and classes with other members within your industry. So you're going to have sponsors, mentors, and allies specific to your industry, complimentary based on generous support from Wells Fargo, and you are the first to hear about this. I want you to take that link, go in and learn as much as you can about the program, but also in that link is an application for you to apply. And it's called the Milestone Mapping Coaching Circle. Again, Connect to More is the um, program umbrella. But this was made possible based on the fees that we received from the Small Business Administration for the payroll protection program. So um, that is my lead magnet. And um, I am that's so happy. A, that's a heck of a lead magnet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, is, is this something that I can share with our wider USB? Yes, audience? you definitely can share with your wider um, network. Um, but I am honored to be able to share it with the boot camp today. And um, good luck. And I, I, I hope to come back at a later time and see how the program helped you and hear some of your mentor stories. And um, so congratulations to you again for being here. And I hope that that program strengthens and conditions you to grow your business. So that's my lead magnet. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. And this is so incredible. And it ties very much into mentorship from yesterday. And now you have a program, a prolonged program to actually help walk people through and help uh, support women-owned businesses, women-led businesses. So I'm, I'm real excited about this. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. And, and thank you to the R3 Boot Campers because ending the evening, it was important for me to, um, you know, find additional information to share. So to be able to unveil that program to you here um, today um, is so exciting. So Congratulations, and um, yeah, definitely fill out those applications as soon as you can. Uh, so yesterday we ended with community um, and making connections. And um, that's where the conversation started relative to your mentors, sponsors, and, and creating allies. So um, I would love for us to begin at slide 25, Philip, right at um, marketing. So as I mentioned, uh, Marsha Lynn did all the heavy lifting for me. So pretty much this is gonna be smooth and easy for you. I'm not gonna take up a lot of your time, but tonight we're gonna to talk through marketing 
and then end with capital considerations, because as my son says, mom, it's all about the bag. Um, so I am going to talk through how you can, you know, get the bag for your business. Uh, but as we talk through marketing, just creating new ways for you to convey your message, you know, from referrals to a more organized online presence, um, which Marsha has so eloquently provided for us. So I'm really just going to supplement and, and um, enhance um, some of that information. And I want us to return back to, um, you know, talking about the value proposition and really crafting your message. And I think the, the most important way to craft your message is by using the SMART model. Um, again, the S is specific, specific to what service or product you offer, pretty much what you do. And then when we talk about the M, you know, measuring the success of your business, you know, what evidence do you have that proves that your product or service is great? And a lot of that comes from your online ratings, your reviews, and much of what Marsha Lynn talked about, the analytics that are presented to you through, you know, your Facebook um, business page, face, Facebook for business, your Instagram, your online presence, uh, your email um, campaigns, you know, of the many uh, emails that you've sent, how many were opened? Of those that were opened, how many you know, went from being a prospective, you know, client to an actual customer. And then how many of those customers returned, but brought a friend with them? And then action, you know, can you reasonably deliver what your potential customer needs? And if you're not able to deliver, you think about, you know, sponsors and allies, sometimes your competition. You know, how can you deliver actionable items to your client base? And is the product or service relevant? Does it align with your values and beliefs as the business owner? But does it also tie into your mission statement and your value statement? And does it also tie into the customer's ask? So as Marsha Lynn um, mentioned, you know, what are some of the things that your customers are asking you or pr pr prospective clients asking you? Or when you're providing that 30 minute elevator speech, what question comes after? So tie it into your values and your beliefs. It has to be relevant to your target audience. And then last but not least, time bound. What is your service level agreement? Can you deliver in the time frame that you've promised and or advertised. And with the um, being in midst of the pandemic, there have been changes in um, the delivery scope, you know, whether it's FedEx or it's the United States Postal Service. So you may have had to add a disclaimer to your website or your social media presence to suggest that pre-COVID, your response time might have been five to six days. In the midst of the pandemic, it may have extended out to seven to 10, in some cases, 10 to 14, and I've even seen 14 to 21. So marketing is key, but the key to it is really crafting the message and returning back to basics to see if that, that message still aligns in the space that we're currently in today. Okay, um, so let's dive into marketing. We're gonna go to the next slide. So when you craft that message, you have to look at how your customers have changed. Think about what you want to achieve. And if we go back to yesterday's conversation, and you place yourself in your customer's shoes, connect with your customers along the journey. And, and what I mean by journey is when they first came in contact with you or your brand. So from the origination point to that end point. When you think about um, the know, like, and trust factor, along that customer's journey, 
When did they begin to know you? When did you identify that they sort of kind of liked you? Like, you know, you remember when we were in high school and you get that note from an, the, your admirer and it would say, do you like me? Yes or no. Well, at what point did your customer say, yes, I like you or no, I don't like you or I don't know enough about you. But when did they begin to trust you? And then trusting you even more where they brought somebody along to the next party. So you want to highlight your biggest selling point. But what is that? What is your number one solution? What are people asking you for? When you think about your online ratings, your five-star customers, what engaged them in giving you a five-star rating? And when you look through your five-star ratings, is most of that information, does it align with the same message from one five-star to the next? So that might be your best selling point. What aspect of your customer's experience is being highlighted in the online reviews? What are you best at? So that's how you'll best craft your marketing message. And as Marsha Lynn indicated, you know, if it's going to be email marketing, you're looking at anywhere between maybe one to two times a month. If it's going to be Instagram or Facebook, that could very well be, you know, three times a week. So that's where we'll begin. Now, yesterday, and I'm Philip, we're going to move to the next slide. Yesterday, I talked a great deal about LinkedIn. And LinkedIn is very important for um, the professional entrepreneurs and queenpreneurs that we have on the line today. And when we talk about the um, professional industries, it's generally your um, notary publics, your certified public accountants, your attorneys, consultants real estate, bankers, dentists, doctors, even health and well-being coaches, yoga instructors, chefs. I'm oftentimes asked, at what point do you decide that the conversation should no longer be driven by COVID-19? That point of, there is no point of exit right now for COVID-19. LinkedIn content that mentions COVID-19 sees a 30% higher engagement than just crafting a normal message. COVID-19 has affected humanity on so many levels and varying levels. I shared yesterday that it affected me because I lost my mother to COVID-19. It, it came to a point where I couldn't even watch, you know, my, my programs that I love on MSNBC or even local news networks because every time that they would show those numbers in Pennsylvania, I was reminded that my mother was one of those numbers. But at the end of the day, I'm not the only one who was affected by COVID-19. So how can I share my story? Because there is someone who is feeling the same way I'm feeling. You know, that they say that there's these five levels of grief. Well, how do you know what level you're in? You know, so engage humanity with where we're sitting right now and continue to lean into the conversation because everyone's conversation and experience is different. But craft your message so that it aligns with your product or your service, your values, your belief. Um, there was an article today on LinkedIn and it was by um, Laisha Ward. 
She's the executive vice president for Target. And she talked about the importance of community relative to mentors, sponsors, and allies. And I thought, oh my gosh, the messaging in her article today tied into what we discussed. So please, if you have not created a um, LinkedIn account, please do so. And if you do nothing else, take a look at Laisha Ward's article today. It was empowering. And as we move on to the next slide, how do you share your message? And what message should be shared? I think first and foremost, the most important one, if for any reason you have gone from a brick and mortar store to an online presence because of COVID-19, that should be updated on your social media outlets as well as your page. You would not believe how many clients that I've prospected and we've scheduled a meeting and I'm at the wrong location only because they did not update their page that they were either in a new location. Um, it could be in the same building, just maybe they moved to a larger office or a smaller office. Or you have someone who is looking to visit you, they're in town, they saw your message on social media and you no longer have a brick and mortar, you now have an online presence or you have online, but you're limited in scope with your inventory because now all of your inventory is sitting in the brick and mortar, but you didn't update the page. So please make sure that you're posting up-to-date information. Make sure that you're looking at your website daily, weekly, monthly, so that you too understand maybe what your online glitches are. Maybe something didn't update. Update your new hours, any products, and especially policies. Because although here in Philadelphia, um, we have the no mask rule, there are still many businesses that do require that you wear your mask. That type of information should be updated. If you want to share your employees, you know, the shining smiles, because it's been months since anyone has been able to, to tell whether or not you're smiling or you're crying, and now you're all fully vaccinated and you're just so happy just to show your pearly whites, please update that on your website. Pull at the hard strings. Oh, yes, everybody came back to work and everybody is happy at work. And then when you think about how your customer's journey has changed, how can you connect with them organically? Think about which of your posts gained the most engagement. Think about, you know, on Facebook, which of your posts had the most shared activity? That's organic growth. Play off of that. Whatever the messaging was in that post that garnered the most engagement, stay close to it, highlight it, create something else that gives that same enthusiasm and energy. And then create a digital marketing strategy that makes sense for your customers, your target audience. Because the hashtags that I share with a demographic of let's say, 40 to 55, don't match the same hashtags that I would share for a demographic that's anywhere between 18 to 25. And sometimes I have to share the hashtags with my son because he's like, mommy, I don't understand what that means. Or mommy, you're showing your age. So sometimes I have to get in with him to figure out what does that hashtag look like in his demographic versus mine. Because a lot of times there's the hashtag old school and he's like an old school to my son who's 15 is old school. <laughs> but now this new school generation, they're not even using new school. They're using terms like, you know, um, in, uh, in the bag. Now in the bag, that just for me means that I'm putting my groceries in the bag. But in the bag for him means no. In the bag means 
you know, I'm this entrepreneur or this queenpreneur, and I have increased my social media following, or this week I may have projected for 25 new customers and I'm in the bag because now I have 40 new customers. Now in the bag would have just meant for me that I'm putting the item in the bag. So make sure that your digital marketing strategy makes sense to your customers and your target audience. And when I say, you know, seek mentors, the mentors may be in your own household. It might be your sons or your daughters or your nieces or ne your nephews. Their language doesn't make sense to us, but it does make sense to them. So make sure that your marketing makes sense. And it goes back to Marsha Lynn's um, statement earlier. What are the top three questions that your prospects and or customers have asked? So you already have the, the organic seed, plant and grow based on those three questions that your prospects and potential customers are asking. And as we move to the next slide, think about how do you test your message? What do you have to offer? As Marsha Lynn mentioned, it may be um, identifying what you have to offer and based on that product, service, or solution, where can you provide a low-cost offer opportunity? My sister has a candle company. And over the um, Juneteenth weekend, she created um, a low-cost offer and the offer was 19% off. And her messaging or the code was free-ish. I thought it was amazing. So 19% and then your code was free-ish. It was the best messaging over the course of a Juneteenth weekend. And she was able to boost her rate of investment based on the ads that she placed with Facebook and Instagram. So 19% off and the code was free-ish. I thought it was phenomenal and the traffic was just great. And she increased her engagement. So because of her ad campaign or her slogan, she was able to garner more customers because they just thought it was the best. It was almost like Marsha's knock, knock. Knock, knock, we're free-ish, and the code is 19%. Perfect. But when you're doing Facebook for business and you're doing Instagram, the analytics are free. So make sure that you understand what the target audience is based on age demographic. It's also interesting to see, too, what localities and regions they're coming from. Because if you're on the East Coast and your analytics suggest that the traffic driven to your page is from the West Coast, well, now that may determine the times in which you're posting your social media becomes um, top of mind or top of the, um, you know, that, that time frame for which you're delivering your messages might work best for the West Coast. So then you take a look at that information and might have to tweak the times so that you're capturing the East Coast. So the analytics for you know, places like Canva that Marsha Lynn mentioned, and also Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, it's, it's, it's phenomenal. And it'll allow for you to look at what your rate of investment is and where you should um, align your synergies in terms of timeframes for posting content. And when you're increasing that engagement, especially through those posts that garnered the most engagement or had the most shared activity, where did those prospects come from? Were they driven to your website from Instagram, from Twitter, from Facebook? That analy those analytics will help you test your message. And then as we move on to the next slide, it'll also help you budget for the best marketing. 
So a, a survey that was done in March of um, 2020 suggested that 70% of businesses adjusted their Q1 spending. And the reason for that, because you know, the, the first quarter of 2020, we felt we found ourselves in the origination of COVID-19. So you might have had to adjust your spending because now you were relying on an online presence versus print or email marketing. And the email marketing may have shifted because you might have had the email address for an individual that might have been might have been their their work email. And it, you know, unfortunately, if their office closed, you know, now you don't have an email address. For, you don't have their personal email. Sixty three percent said that they had to change their messaging. And they may have had to change the messaging because their business changed, their hours changed, the delivery schedule changed, their inventory may have changed because if you were exporting inventory in from overseas, none of that was coming through. So your messaging needed to reflect that. So when you're budgeting for your marketing, make sure that you're utilizing the complementary resources available through your social media aspects. So next we're gonna move on to the action steps in, in creating your, your marketing plan. Because again, none of this information um, is, is, yes, it's going to help you set a path to follow. And it's going to allow you to overcome any challenges that you find along the way. So your customer insights and your business goals are going to help you craft your message. Again, using that smart goal concept. Your digital message should, or your digital presence should reflect your message. One, to two times a month, as Marsha Lynn indicated via email, three times a week for your social media platforms. And if you're doing a, a newsletter, it could be bi-weekly or it could be once a month. Determine what that strategy should be based on your customers' habits, your online ratings and your reviews, your analytics from your social media platforms. And then you decide how you want to spend the money on marketing and what your budget should be for it based on that an those analytics. And when you think about bullet number two, your digital presence should reflect your message. It should align with your values and your beliefs. It should be a heart sell and not a hard sell. It should definitely be a heartfelt sell and not a hard sell. I've been in banking now for 17 years and I've never seen myself as a salesperson. I haven't, I've never sold a thing. What I do is I connect businesses to resources. I connect them to people and solutions. I don't sell anything. So keep that in mind when you're um, building the steps for your marketing plan. And as my son would say, let's get in the bag. Next, we're gonna talk about capital considerations. Show me the money. I talked yesterday about traditional banking. And when I say traditional banking, you think about larger financial institutions and how do I get closer to financing my business? And I wanna share a tidbit with you. Larger institutions such as Wells Fargo do require that your business is at least two years old. 
And the reason that we require that your business is two years old is because we want to see how much skin you have in the game. Oftentimes, business owners say to me, well, how can I grow the business if I don't have the capital? When you decide to start a small business, you are the capital. You are the capital. Underwriting needs to know that you have year over year growth, that your revenues are growing through challenges, challenges that may be specific as a pandemic, challenges that may be as specific as a growing customer base, In the first two years of a small business, you are the capital. When you make the decision to start a small business, you have to make the decision. And, and this is fitting because we're in boot camp. You have to make the decision to tie up your bootstraps and run the course with your own startup money. It could very well be a GoFundMe account. It could be in angel investors. It could be family and friends. But traditional lending from a financial institution does not become available until you're at least two years old. When you sit down and you start to think about your taxes, of course, you want to look at your top line items. And yes, there are so many expenses that go into running your business. But if those expenses bring your bottom line dollars down to a negative number or zero, there's no year over year growth that an underwriting team is going to be comfortable with in giving you any financing. Because if you haven't made any gross revenues or you came in at a negative number, you can't afford to take out a line of credit or a loan. When we think about our personal finances, and, and making sure that we live below our means, the same holds true for business. So a negative bottom line or zero bottom line on your taxes tells us that there is no year over year growth. There is no revenues available to pay a financial institution for the loan. So in the first two years of your startup, you are the capital. Organizations such as USBC, they're your capital. They're providing you with business planning tools so that you can later be considered for capital. Um, so I just want to share that because I am, you know, one of the top questions that I'm always asked is how can I grow my business without financing? You have to grow your business through people as your number one capital consideration within the first two years of your business. The people also include your employees because they're the first line of defense you have to treat your employees with the amount of favor and grace that you want them to in turn deliver to your prospects or your customers. People are your capital considerations within your first two years of starting your business. The SBA, the Small Business Administration, they're your capital in the first two years. Organizations such as NABO, um, the National Association for Women Business Owners, they're your capital 
within the first two years. Organizations such as SCORE.org, they're your capital. WellsFargo.com slash small business resources, that's your capital. And then in two years, you have created enough cash flow based on all those tools and resources from those people capital considerations that you are then ready for financing. But now we're in the midst of a pandemic. So it sounds good, Camille, yeah, I know. So I'm gonna to introduce to you some other people capital considerations. Because Wells Fargo understands that this pandemic has put us in a situation that we have never experienced before. And small businesses are the nucleus for growing our economy. And although we know as an organization that we cannot support in the traditional sense, but we can support. So $400 million we received as capital from our fees from the payroll protection loan. We share those proceeds with community development financial institutions around the United States. When you have an opportunity, I want you to go to wellsfargo.com slash open for business. There you're gonna be able to download a PDF of all the businesses throughout the United States that we were able to extend a grant to. There is a community development financial institution in your area that received a grant. With that grant money, they are helping business owners such as yourself gain financial capital. You don't have to be two years old. You just have to be a legitimate business. So you're going to go to wellsfargo.com slash open for business. Along that page in the middle, you're going to find a PDF with all of the businesses that received a grant from Wells Fargo. That grant money is in turn being turned into grant considerations for businesses like yours for working capital to increase your cash flow. There is a CDFI in your location. It's alphabetized and the homework that I'm giving you, right now I'm telling you to tie up your bootstraps. And if not tomorrow or Monday, you're gonna reach out to those organizations and find out how you can be considered for the Open for Business Fund sponsored by Wells Fargo. So if you turn to page um, 33 for me, Philip, I mentioned cash flow, and cash flow basically is your money coming in and your money going out. Your accounts receivable is your money coming in. So all of your digital sales, your store sales, in some cases, your subscriptions. You might have a weekly, monthly subscription. And then your accounts payable is the money going out. So your overhead, your rent, your payroll, all of your material costs, your cost of goods. Positive cash flow is when your money coming in is greater than the money going out. Of course, negative cash flow is when the money going out is more than your money coming in. Financial institutions such as Wells Fargo want to see positive cash flow. But if I'm less than two years, how do I get there? So the Open for Business Fund was created specifically for you so that you can increase the money coming in 
and $400 million of that, all derived from the payroll protection program, was given back to the community to increase your cash flow. And that's one of the reasons that I love working for Wells Fargo, because at the end of the day, there has to be a program in place for us to serve the community that continues to make sure that they can make payroll. So moving on to the next slide, if you received your payroll protection funds, please ensure that you track all that spending and that you review the terms and obligations of the loan itself. So all of that information um, relative to um, the forgiveness of it is available at sba.gov. It hasn't all been ironed out for the, the first um, PPP or the second, but the updates come through sba.gov. And when we talk about other resources, um, Main Street lending programs are those specific community development financial institutions that are in your area. So you want to be able to identify your local chambers and, you know, U.S. Black Chambers can assist you with that information, as well as FDIC.gov can identify those Main Street lending programs as well. But that PDF will identify for you the ones that Wells Fargo is partnering with, whereby you can take advantage of, of those opportunities. And then, of course, your local and your private resources, you know, come available to you through the, the various chambers. I know here in Philadelphia, we have a hospitality chamber. We have the LGBTQ chambers. We have our division of the U.S. Black Chambers, organizations such as the National um, Women's Business Owners. So there is available funding out there for you if you're less than two years old or if you don't meet the criteria for traditional lending through a larger institution. And if you connect with me on LinkedIn because you're having difficulty finding them, I'll point you in the right direction. And then we talked a lot about community and connections. So if we move to the next slide, your local banker with wherever financial institution you have a relationship with, Make an appointment with them so that they could review your business account. And you want to ask them to look at additional um, solutions that may have been created amidst the pandemic. So a lot of checking accounts and savings accounts have been changed because of COVID-19. A lot of them allow for reduced or eliminated fees, maybe if you make 10 debit card transactions per month. In some cases, five business debit card transactions from, per month. Or it may require that you have a lower average monthly balance in order to reduce those fees. The relationship that you have with your banker should suggest that they are proactive to your growth and not reactive to your challenges. What makes me great as a banker is that I am reactive to growth and not reactive to the challenge that you have because now you have to reach out to me. So I always ask any prospective client or customer. Now, prior to COVID, my ask would be that we could talk by phone at least once a month and have a face-to-face -face interaction at least once a quarter. Because not only am I committed to their growth, but I want them to be committed to having a fruitful relationship with me as their banker. I'm their advocate, I'm their trusted advisor, but I can only advise you if I understand what's happening with your business. And I wanna stay close to your business so that I know even before you know that you're growing. Or I know before you know that maybe there's a challenge that's ahead. I should be telling you that, you shouldn't be telling me that. So your banker should be proactive to you growing to make it to the two years 
or to make it to a $500,000 company or a million dollar company because every large Fortune 500 company started small and not reactive to the challenges. So they, you shouldn't have had to react to the pandemic or you shouldn't have had to react to not having access to the payroll protection program for whatever variant there was. If you have any outstanding loans or you have credit cards, go to your bank and have them review your interest rate and your repayment terms because there are opportunities for you to de decrease your interest rate, refinance, or change the scope of your repayment terms because of the space we're in. Your banker can provide that advisement to you. So when we talk about those action steps to help with capital, it's very important that you track your spending for any PPP funds that you receive. Additional opportunities are available to you. And I'm sorry, Philip, I went ahead. We're on the next slide. They are available to you through your local Main Street not-for-profit organizations. And that PDF that I'm directing you to will identify those in your state. And make an appointment with your local financial institution to review your operating accounts, your business credit cards, and or loans. And not just on your the, the uh, business side, do the same for your personal accounts as well. And as we go into the next slide, there is a future for us all. The pandemic has taught us more than ever um, that we need to keep an eye on our long-term planning. We think about it on the personal side when we think about, you know, what's going to be available to us outside of, you know, Social Security, what our 401k and our 403bs look like, that same determination and planning should be applied to your business. It's okay to start to think about your exit strategy, even as a startup. I remember during my freshman year um, at Norfolk State, our um, convocation speaker, his name was Dr. Benjamin McClure. And he said that there are no shortcuts in life, only shortcomings. And that has guided me for a great deal of my life, that there are no shortcuts in life, only shortcomings. Don't take the shortcut by not having a business plan. Don't take the shortcut by not identifying um, and reviewing your analytics. Don't take the shortcut in not having a conversation with your banker because you are owed that. It's complimentary to you because we're using your deposits in order to fund someone else's business who might be two years or, or older. So take advantage of the resources that are afforded to you to help you set your sights on the future and get closer to the perspective that you have set in front of you. And as I close out my presentation tonight, the Open for Business Fund was a $400 million investment. Please take full advantage of it in your local communities. That is your capital consideration to grow your business, to become a Fortune 500. Everyone started somewhere. And as we progress through the next slides, um, the information is available relative to um, some of the articles that are out there, additional small business webinars that highlight features of our presentation here. And then again, wellsfargo.com slash biz. There's a unique opportunity there for you to draft your business plan. 
It is a complimentary resource. It allows for you to save it, for you to print it, for you to share it. And then wellsfargo.com small business resources, which will continue to deliver on the content that I shared with you today. And then the Open for Business Fund. And please, to my queenpreneurs, please take advantage of the Connect to More 12-week mentor opportunity because your mentors that will be aligned with you will be specific to your industry. And you'll be aligned with other individuals um, who are in um, localities throughout the United States that you're going to continue to build relationships with. And you will be allowed to mentor each other. So as I mentioned um, yesterday and today, I salute you because being here tells me that you are rooted, resilient, and ready. And the resources and tools that we shared with you will only allow for you to um, take your business into the future. So Philip, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Well, thank you so much, Camille. Again, another day of powerful information. This time you came with, you know, the connect to more resource. Uh, that's just amazing. And, and to know that we're one of the first ones to hear about this, this program, I really do appreciate you bringing that to the table for our members, for our listeners. Uh, this has been an amazing uh, R3 boot camp. And, and before I let you go, we, we still have some questions that came. Oh, sure, out. by all means, yes. Right. And, and uh, first one right off the bat is we know that Wells Fargo is really big in supporting small businesses. Does Wells Fargo also support uh, nonprofits? Yes, we definitely do. So just, um, well, evident through the uh, Open for Business Fund, um, all of the organizations in which we provided the grant monies were all not-for-profits. Not um, not-for-profits are in a unique position because you don't have guarantors, so to speak. Um, so it's easier for a not-for-profit to gain financing than it is for a for-profit. Um, and it's because, you know, the position of a not-for-profit really is to assist the community. Um, so yes, we do have programs geared towards not-for-profits, um, just to ensure that your 501-3C um, um, is in order. And as you go to those resource page, there is specific information relative to not-for-profit organizations as well. Okay, perfect, perfect. You know, and, and some of the action steps that you listed earlier, uh, part of that requires us to make sure that we connect with the banker. And, and I know that there may be some folks who, uh, you know, are on the call today who, who may not have attended day two or day one, but I, I want you to just kind of talk a little bit more about that relationship that they should be developing with their banker. Um, definitely so. So, you know, not only are they there to provide you, you know, solutions, and when you think about um, a financial institution, it's generally a checking account, a savings account, a credit card, um, home equity loan, auto loan. It's, it's not just about that. Um, they are also advisors, and they should be advising you. And the relationship that you have with your banker should really be about you doing 80% of the talking and they doing 20% and the, the other 20% is them responding to um, your conversation. I mentioned yesterday um, this term um, dumb and I, I gave it an acronym. It means doesn't understand my business. I never want a business to look at me as a dumb banker. I need to understand your operating model. I need to understand what you sell, how you sell it, sell it why you sell it. I need to understand you know, how you get paid, how you make payments. We might have you know, two to three conversations where you're just talking about your business before I come back to you with any solutions because I can't provide you a solution if I don't understand what I'm solving for. So when I talk about um, having a relationship with your banker, you should be able to schedule an appointment and sit with them and talk through life. 
and they provide you with, with you know, solutions to help you with life. <laughs> it, it, there should not be a conversation. They should not mention product or services until the last 20 minutes of that dialogue or 20% of that dialogue. And a lot of times I say, they should not be providing solutions or talking any product name until maybe the second or third meeting. You should go have a relationship with your banker where you can just go in and talk about what's on your mind because they should be advising you based on experience that they had with the businesses down the street that's similar to yours or similar to another family that's around the corner that's makeup is similar to yours. So no products or services should be spoken and it should be an 80-20 rule where you're doing 80% of the talking, um, they're listening and then 20% of that dialogue, you know, they should be engaging you. Thank you, thank you for sharing that because I, I also agree it is incredibly important to, you know, develop a, a connection so that they can, they may have some, uh, you know, information that the small business owner is not aware of, such as when Correct. PPP came out, you know, uh, the folks that really took advantage of that program were the folks that had relationships with their banker. Yes. So uh, I'm so glad that you underscored the importance of that. And then also, uh, uh, there are some folks uh, that have asked the question, how can they reach you, uh, Camille, on LinkedIn? What, what, what are your LinkedIn credentials so that our folks can reach out to you? My LinkedIn credentials are um, Camille Simpkins, and then my email address um, with Wells Fargo is actually Camille dot N is in Nicole dot Simpkins at Wells Fargo dot com. So again, that's Camille dot N is in Nicole dot Simpkins at Wells Fargo dot com. And then on LinkedIn, I'm under Camille Simpkins. Perfect. Perfect. And uh, it looks like we have one more question here. I know that you you talked about LinkedIn and, and you talked about also uh, uh, you know being your own capital in the first two years. You also talked about the CDFIs and some of the opportunities there uh, and also squeezing out every dime of revenue. Talk to us a little bit as well about managing cost as, uh, as small businesses during those first two years. Um. So when you think about managing costs, you're looking at, again, it's always important to understand your cash flow. So understand what's coming in relative to what's going out. What cost can you scale back? Um, so for example, if you're a brick and mortar store and you're accepting credit cards, it's okay for you to look at other credit card companies and do a cost comparison. It doesn't cost you anything to do a cost comparison between credit card companies, because I have been able to save um, prospects who've potentially become customers anywhere between $300 to $3,000 over the course of a year in credit card processing fees. That's one way. A second way may be if you've identified that your brick and mortar space is um, eating up a lot of your overhead and your landlord has another space that might be smaller, there's an opportunity for you to not break your lease, but take over another space that they may potentially have that, will, um, that you could manage based on your current inventory or capacity needs. So you're thinking, oh my gosh, I don't wanna break the lease. So this space is now too small. Or this, space, or this space is too small, I need something bigger. And if I can grab a bigger space then I can increase my inventory because this is what my customers are asking for. If I could drive this particular product or solution up 15 to 20%, then I can afford this larger space. So reach out to your management companies to either decrease your space or increase your space. And then, um, you know, when you think about um, some of the marketing that you're, you're currently using, um, and maybe you don't have an online presence, um, or maybe you have a street team, you know, would it be easier to allow for that physical street team to now become an online street team? Um, also, you know, reach out to a lot of your um, utility providers, um, because there are ways where you can scale back some of the costs 
given the space that we're in. So a lot of programs are available within the um, network of utilities, um, financial institutions where they've created a program offering because of the space that we're in. Okay, and I think that's going to be our last word for today, but uh, one, <laughs> one compliment just came in from one of the attendees and they said that your background is amazing and I have- Oh, ah, thank you. Uh, this is, um, I haven't been able to go to an art gallery, so. But oh, and there's more to it. Wow. Here's my, this is my art gallery. <laughs> wow. Well, I'll tell you what, that, that is so very amazing, so very inspiring. And I think your message in combination with what you have on the wall back there is, is really the full package of inspiration for any of our folks today. Again. Yes, and um, during the pandemic, I was afraid that maybe the women were going to jump out on me and start talking to me, but it would be okay because <laughs> there's some powerful women um, on this wall, so... You know, right. um, I'm an art enthusiast, so um, some of them may not be here with us today. I have Basquiat and, um, you know, of course I have Michelle and, and Barack, but, you know, I also, um, you know, have um, Brianna Taylor. Brianna. So uh, I have the angel over my shoulder. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's so very <laughs> impressive. And it also speaks to Wells Fargo and the authenticity of the people who work uh, for Wells Fargo. So, uh, wow. I, I got to tell you, I, again, I am so amazed at our partnership with you all, and I'm so appreciative. And I know that our, our business owners that are a part of the U.S. Black Chambers are as well. And so I want to thank you on behalf of our president, Ron Busby. I want to thank our attendees for attending this three-day boot camp. You survived boot camp. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, this was a, a very thorough boot camp. We wanted to make sure that we got you all the skills and information and resources that we could. And you saw on today, Wells Fargo delivered in a very, very big way. So the last thing I'm going to ask our attendees to do is to make sure to fill out that survey. Make sure to fill out that survey. If you fill out that survey, we're going to send you a free digital badge that you can use that says that I completed this boot camp, the Wells Fargo boot camp. And that's going to be something that I think you can wear as a badge of honor uh, as you move forward throughout uh, the rest of the year. So again, Camille, I want to thank you. This has been wonderful. You and I are now connected on LinkedIn. We're connected. Yes, we are. <laughs> and so we're going to continue to build a relationship. I encourage all of our attendees to do the same. Uh, build relationships with the folks that uh, share their information, their LinkedIn information in the chat feature. Uh, make sure to continue to watch our webinars, register for our webinars. This boot camp series will be replayed throughout July, so you'll get a chance to watch and learn at your leisure. So with that, we are going to tune out. Everyone can go and take a break because you have completed an intensive three-day boot camp. On behalf of the United States Black Chamber, our President Ron Busby and Wells Fargo, I want to thank you all, and I want to wish you all a happy and a safe weekend. Thank you so much.